There you go. Yay, Danny saved the day, everybody. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Carrie. Hi, everybody. I'm Julie Nutting. I'm here today to show you the new releases that should be hitting the stores very shortly. I am really excited about some of these things. So I'm going to start you with the biggies. These, I believe, are hitting the stores around August. And I want to show you this printer's tray that is a um, raw wood. Look at that pretty handle. It's a raw wood printer's tray that we had especially made to fit the doll stamps because I love working with printer trays. I think they are absolutely the most fun thing to work with and I could never get any of my stamps to work. So here is the finished piece and I think something like this um, in a Christmas theme, in a little girl's life theme, mementos, uh, maybe a dollhouse theme with furniture like I did in this one would just be absolutely fun to make and um, keep in a very special little girl's room. I wanted to just show you I used all Prima Here's the little resin tub over here. Here's the chipboard furniture. Lots of little charms, the little chipboard cat. Here's the little metal handbag from last season. Just lots of fun little things in this piece. Um, this is I'm looking at the computer screen and I don't have the chats not coming through. I'm sorry, so we'll figure that out. This is a um, luggage piece that is, um, I'm going to show you the hardware. Absolutely gorgeous. I painted the edges and I distressed it. There's the cover. It opens up to all these little compartments. And I do not know how to zoom this camera back. So I'm just showing you how wonderful all these little compartments are. I have put in, um, excuse me, I was just looking for a oh, prank. Okay, sorry. I have a live audience here today. Isn't that exciting? Some of my little goodies have fallen out because it's been sitting here for a month or two. Um, anyway, concentrate, focus. I have some 3D items sitting here. Uh, lots of little wood okay. spools, wood letters, all kinds of little wooden pieces that I picked up. We're trying to get on the chat. That's mm -hmm. why I'm like scatterbrained here. Again, lots of little goodies, all the metal embellishments from the Finnebear line, all kinds of goodies. And what I really want to show you guys is you can take these pieces out. So what I'm going to do with one of mine is make a storage case so it will actually lift up and I'll have storage for anything I might want to store in here. Um, craft supplies, maybe a collection. A collection of seashells would be really pretty sitting on a coffee table if you lived at the beach. Um, I had another brainstorm on my way over here thinking, um, I'm sad I didn't bring my, my new book. So here's a plug. I have a new book that just released last month. It's called Collage Couture Studio Paper Dolls. And there's a chapter on settings that someone might want to uh, either glue their paper dolls onto or a little girl might want to play with all these settings. I had a beach. 
I had Paris, I had a house, I had a dress shop, and I thought, how fun would this be if you made this opening a piece of art that was in, say it was a house, or say it was a beach scene, and over here, you could give this to a little girl, and you could put all kinds of paper doll components in here that she could actually play with. And I just thought that is a really fun idea and a fun gift idea. So anyway, that was my little brainstorm on the way over here. But as is, I would set this on a shelf somewhere and it would be a really, really cute piece of decor. So those are my fun pieces to show you. And now I'm going to get on with some of the stamps and the other accessories. Oh, I'll show you guys this first. This is a new stamping block. It comes in two sizes. This is the large one. This would fit that mermaid stamp that you've all asked for. And I forget what the other size is, but they uh, fit the larger size stamps, the mermaid, the princess, and such. So that's going to be available in stores soon. I love little prints for their clothes. So here is two new paper pads. Um, the paper pad, the six by six pads now are coming um, front and back printed, which um, actually, as my little analytical side of my brain is thinking, might even be better on shipping costs and such because you're getting um, fronts and backs to these wonderful prints that are small enough for dresses. They all coordinate so you can make headbands, bows, shoes, all pockets, all kinds of fun things. This one is called blush and this one is called haha <laughs> where is it? Dress up, dress me up. More fun little prints and I will be using these today. We have a new tag pad. It's watercolor and it's just plain white watercolor paper. Um, you get 24 of these and that's actually what we're going to be doing today is working with the watercolor pad and watercolor pencils which we are coming out with and I'm not sure if they're I believe they'll be available in August too. Here's the new stamps. I have oh, we'll go in. a card set which is Halloween. You can see the little witch. Whoa, go the other way. There's a bat, a pumpkin, and two little things in there. And the pumpkin I made kind of in the fashion of the dresses to where you could use all kinds of different orange papers and piece that together if you wanted to. She's really, really fun. And here's the other card set. This one is Christmas. And um, the little paper doll here has her Santa hat on and her Christmas dress. I would really recommend that you guys get these sooner than later because when you want them at Halloween or Christmas you're not going to be able to find them and I think you all kind of know that by now. Here we have a set of hats and these are kind of the costume hats. I've got a witch's hat, a party hat, bunny ears, and an oversized crown which um, we'll be using on the tag today. Very very cute. Here is Oh, this is another card set, and I've been using this to death. It's a little um, paper doll dress. No, it doesn't fit on a stamp. It's just simply to use as, a, as an embellishment. There's some little buttons. There's three things. One says time to play. 
One says, eat, sleep, and play paper dolls. And the other says, the paper doll princess. I've been using these, um, these to death in my tags. So I'll show you <coughs> that too. Um, here we have, I lost my packaging for him. This, so I'm going to hold it together. This is Max. It's actually called Dog Treats, but it's Max. This is my dog. I drew him. He's a little terrier, or as we call him, a little terror here because he is a monster. Um, small but cute, but a monster. He has a jacket and he has a beret, so he can either go as is or he can dress up to match your girls. We'll start with the first girl. Her name is Shiara. And she is a little curly haired girl that could very well be African American as well as she could be pale skin with red hair and be a little Irish girl. She's very versatile and she is probably my favorite stamp so far to play with. Um, this is Kira. She's holding a bouquet of flowers. Um, if you were piece, piecing her together with paper, you would cut those off. But if you were putting her on a watercolor stamp, you could actually use those flowers and color them right in. And this is Valentina. She's wearing a little coat and boots. And I think she would be adorable dressed up in orange and black with the little witch's hat. Very, very cute. Um, she could also be very wintry on a, on a Christmas project, too. And here we have it, Aiden. You've asked for it. Here's Aiden. He is um, the boy of the group so far. So he's wearing little cargo pants and tennis shoes and spiky hair and in our live audience today we have a young man who gave thumbs up to him he thought he was a-okay so I guess I did okay with this and then we have some clear stamps this is called expressions you can't see it very well but I'll show you them on the doll um, there's three expressions here, one with closed eyes. Very cute. If you wanted to add faces to these dolls, you could. Now, as a word of warning, these don't fit the, what I call the older dolls with the smaller heads, the women. They don't fit those, but they do fit the younger girl dolls with the bigger heads. And, of course, they fit these. So they're kind of fun to play with, too. So what we're going to do is play with some of the watercolor goodies and here's some tags that I just watercolored nothing no embellishments nothing special <clears throat> just simply practiced um, watercoloring these and of course you could paper piece if you wanted to on top. Here's the little girl with the flowers. I actually inked some little dots through a stencil on the background to play around. Here's my winter girl. Her tights didn't weren't really supposed to be orange, but sometimes color, like I said, I was practicing. Snowflakes from my uh, winter card line that is currently out. And um, here's a tag that I used watercolors on the background. And I used the standard um, skin tone paper pad buff, which is already out. And I did a little bit of shading on 
her body with the watercolor pencils. So I'll show you how you can do that as well. I paper pieced her dress from the new pads. And here I have the little paper, paper doll princess. And see that little oversized crown, how adorable that is? She's just really, really cute. She looks really cute when you do leggings too. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get the watercolor pad and I don't have the pencils to show you per se because they are not here yet. So these are the prototypes. You can see by the colored numbers on the ends, but these are the prototypes of what you will be getting in a finished product. We have, um, Prima came out with a set of, I want to say 12, but I'm not real sure, any decorated tin, and then for the dolls, we came out with a six pack of skin tone colors, light to dark, and then a six pack hair tone colors. Blonde, red, brunette, <clears throat> black. You can do all kinds of um, color combinations with those two packs. So I'm going to take some bright colors. Oh, I didn't bring my little mister. I usually have a mister. And I'm going to wet my tag. And there's so many different ways you can do a background. I've got my tag damp, so now I am going to um, get some of this color and I'm just going to make some nice um, blobs. Okay. Ooh, we'll do that when it dries. That's too close. Oh, I'm going to use yellow because I love yellow. Yellow brightens everything up and makes things a little bit sunnier. You can go like this and then just blend it with your pencil. I'm just kind of laying it down and in different ways so you can see different ways you can can do this. When you color it you are going to get a few pencil lines but that's kind of fun sometimes because it's really just about mixed media and playing. I had some purple in this tag which I just thought was so pretty. And I want it a little more vibrant, so we'll I used um, some of the inkers on the background to the edge chalk inkers. through some stenciling, which added even more color and more interest. I seem to be working at an angle here. Don't know why. It's just the way. I think I want a little bit of the lime green. I'm just going to throw a bunch of colors so we can just see. The lighting is not good on the uh, 
black mat, is it? So let me. There we go. If I hold it. When I hold it, you can see the color. Let's try. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's not helping. I'm moving the. Yeah, let's. We're trying to get the lighting okay for you guys because it's just not. Mm -hmm. Yes. That way, it just did something. Go slowly this way. Wow. <laughs> we are turning off lights, on lights, moving things around. Oh, there's a little bit, but not. How's that? Much better. Okay, much better. So let's see what happens. And then I get so focused on what I'm doing. Love this color. So we're just going to throw in a little more pink and a little more purple. And I'm going to let that dry over here. In the meantime, I'm going to stamp my little girl onto Now I lost her, because you can't do a video without losing it and stuff. So let me open the new one. I brought one that was already used, so I would have a nice clean stamp. So much for that idea. So now I'm going to ink her up, and I'm using a uh, archival ink with this because I can actually watercolor over it and it won't um, run. So there we have a good stamp. And I'm going to Take my skin tone pencils. While I think I'm going to do, I'm going to stamp on the watercolor tag too. And that way I can show you different ways you can do a girl with the pencils. So I have two girls, one on watercolor, one on the buff pad, and I'm going to take a light brown on this paper, and I'm going to just shade what is on my left side of the face, and just do a little bit of shading like you would if you were doing uh, markers, Copic markers. Uh, put a little bit of shadow under her sleeves. And I'm just a little bit of shadow where her arm meets her dress. 
and then down her legs. The pencils are a really nice consistency on this paper. You could actually leave it the way it is. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Oh, my eye is starting to run. Um, so there's a little bit of shading with pencil. I'm going to take a damp brush, not water soaked, and I'm going to go along those lines to blend it in. And it's blending really nicely. And that just gives me a little bit of a shadow. I may go back with some darker pencil. See that nice shadow? But while I'm doing while that dries, because I don't want to go over it right now with uh, darker. I know you can't, the lighting isn't terrific. Let me get this in a spot where you can, okay, I'm going to do her head. I'm taking the lightest flesh tone pencil that we're going to have. Oops, wrong one. Oh well, she'll be a little bit pinky on there, on that side. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to hang on. I don't know why my eye is watering horribly and it's going to end up getting in the watercolors. And then we're going to have black mascara paint. Okay. I'm taking this light flash and I'm kind of doing an all over. I'm sorry. I totally stated that wrong in the beginning. We're doing it all over her skin. Every bit of it. And I'm just shading it in. On the watercolor paper it's got that um, bumpy texture. So just using the pencils is not as pretty as it was on the buff pad. So now I'm going to take my clean brush and I'm just blending this in with a little bit of water. This right here is just a round number six pencil or paintbrush. When I do my lighter shading, it's going. I'm going to use a smaller brush. So there's all her skin, just totally painted with the light, light flesh tone. And now I'm going to take a, excuse me, a number four pencil. I'm sorry, I keep saying that. A number four paintbrush. And I'm going to go in here with a lighter tone, I mean a darker tone. Gosh, you guys, my head is crazy chaos today. And as you can see, I'm taking it off, straight off the pencil because that gives me a little more control of my color. And I just shade it in the left side of her face, which is going to be, the left side is going to be her shaded area. And I can tell you, this is way easier than using Copics or markers. Um, watercolor is very forgiving. You when you think about some of the greeting cards that you see that are watercolor, you know how the watercolor goes out of the lines and it's just, you know, it's just not perfect. That's why I like this. And I'm going to even show you, I'm not going to doctor up her legs at all. I'm going to show you the imperfections 
and it actually adds character to me. On her leg, I've got, you know, kind of jiggly lines, light and dark. I'm going to blend that up there a little bit. I don't like it, but I do like that. It's imperfect, but it shows that it's watercolor. And I blended that line a little bit with a damp brush, so it's just a little bit nicer. When I teach classes, I always tell everybody, if you want perfection, go to Hallmark. When you're doing your own crafts and your own art, there's going to be imperfections. And that's what gives it that nice handmade quality. Perfection just, there isn't a place for it in this world. So there she is. Shaded and wonderful using only two colors. And then I'm going to give her a little cheek action here. I do cheeks um, different ways. Sometimes I'll just use chalks or pastel. And sometimes I'll do watercolor. Chalks and pastel will give you a more blended look. Watercolor, a little less so. So there she has some cheeks and her skin is ready to go. I'm going to go back to my first girl with my small brush here. And I'm going to take a, let me get, okay, you're not going to be able to see this very well. So what I'm going to do is find the right color and then I'm going to move it up so you can see it a little bit better. I always test my colors before I go put it down because um, with browns you get a lot of red hues. Sometimes you get a little bit of gray. So what I'm going to do now is take a darker. I can barely see what I'm doing because of where I'm holding this. And I'm just going to have an extremely damp, barely wet brush right now that I'm blending that in. And that just gives you a tiny bit of shadow. And you're not using a ton of water, so my paper is not wrinkling at all. Okay. So I'm going to move on to hair. There's a little bit of a water blob here, so I'm going to just kind of blot it. And redo that cheek a little bit. So on this girl, I think I'm going to make her Oh, I think we'll make her more blonde, kind of a blonde, light redhead. I don't know why we lost. So I'm going to take a light yellow pencil and I'm going to color her hair all over. And remember this is going to spread so it's not like you have to color every single piece of white. You don't. You just want to lay some of that color down. And then here's my paintbrush again. 
just damp. The more water you use, the lighter the color is going to be, the longer it's going to take to dry. <clears throat> and I feel like I have less control over my pencils. So I have <clears throat> a nice layer of um, yellow down. And I'm going to take a lighter, a very light brown, and I'm going to go and add some texture. I never cut out my dolls until I'm done coloring their hair because I can go outside the lines and not worry about it like I just did. I can see where there's dark, darker spots that need blending so I'm just going to move in and blend that a little bit back here behind her neck should be darker watercolor paper gives you a lot of time to fix mistakes so I'm just going in with my color and now I'm going to um, do some blending it's still wet and I can look at this and see where I want to add more I might add a little more yellow in here because I covered a lot of it up and we want to have some highlights And again, everything around me is damp, so I can blend. <clears throat> I'm going to take a reddish brown, a little bit darker. And remember, you're buying these in packs. You're buying this in a three pack. So if you buy a redhead, those three colors are going to give you what you're looking for. If you buy a blonde, you're going to have three colors. There will be a brunette and there will be black. <clears throat> so this is not So very hard to do. As you can see, it's pretty simple. <clears throat> and we're going to say that she's done. This little girl, her skin tone is slightly darker. So I'm going to um, <clears throat> give her a darker hair. And I'm coloring kind of a mid tone brown on. I didn't test this color, so I'm just hoping it comes out okay. And I'm going to go in and color it. It's kind of a reddish brown. So I'll go in with a darker brown for her shading. She'll have some red highlights, kind of. See, I'm really going outside my lines because I just, I don't care. I am shading
It's a dark brown. Oh, my hairbrush or my um, paintbrush got really hairy on the ends. Does that ever happen to you guys? I don't know why it's doing that. And this brown is blending um, really nicely. I'll lift this up in just a second so you can see. With my hairbrush, it's going, paintbrush, it's going in all directions here. So let me go ahead and blend it. I'm getting some of that dark brown on my brush and bringing it down to other places. I could go darker on her if I <clears throat> really wanted to. But I know time is kind of a factor, so I'll just go in a little bit. Sometimes you'll have pieces of the paper showing through, <clears throat> and I don't mind that. It adds a little bit of texture. Again, I'm not after perfection. I'm after a hand-painted um, look. So there's her hair. I'm going to go back to this piece because I want to show you something super fun. <clears throat> We're going to I brought the wrong yellow. I meant to bring the bright yellow <clears throat> of the bloom spray. And I'm going to put a stencil over it. And this is showing up really faint. There is not, I don't want a ton of color. That's not what I'm after. But you can see a very faint pattern, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted this to be on the subtle side. And I'm going to let, I'm going to blot it dry just for time here. And when I did my <coughs> first tag, I felt like it was too bright. So I took the Color Bloom um, Pearl White and I sprayed over the entire tag. And you guys will not be able to see this. But what it does is it blends the colors a little better. And it adds just this really beautiful pearl sheen to it. <clears throat> and that, I have like a little blob of something here. That's going to dry. <clears throat> And I'm going to uh, pick out paper for my little girl for her dress. And I'm going to lay down the tag and see what I like with it. Ooh, that green is kind of fun. I'm going to give her a green dress. I forgot to uh, paint her shoes, didn't I? She's going to have a green dress.
And her little scarf around her waist can be something contrasting. So I think I'm going to use this floral. So we'll just stamp that little scarf separately. I'm going to cut. <clears throat> Once my tag is dry, I'm going to um, run some of the chalk edgers over it over a stencil to add <clears throat> more colors in that I want to add. Um, and maybe we'll stamp on top of it too with some of those buttons <clears throat> from that little stamp set. I'm using like the crettiest scissors I could pick up because I forgot mine. They get kind of filled with glue and all kinds of weird stuff here. At home when I'm creating and I'm cutting all these curves on the hem bottom, on the shoulders, on the shoes. I'll file it down with an emery board to make it um, <clears throat> a little smoother because it's really difficult to get rounded shapes without those sharp points sometimes. But I'm not going to do that today. Still a little damp. Quicken it up. <clears throat> I edge all my clothes. Somebody said they love cutting things out by hand. <laughs> I do too. It's really therapeutic to me. But I get a lot of people writing me, make more dyes, but I love cutting things by hand. So I have her little dress and her the little scarf that goes around it. If I had a white Sharpie with me right now, which I don't, I might color in the lace, you know, that ruffle at the bottom of her sleeves just to give it a little contrast. But I don't have that. <clears throat> so now I'm going to cut her out quickly. I'm not going to do the insides of her arms because we're running out of time. I really thought I would, I didn't know how I was going to fill this hour. Actually when you cut them out and you're putting a dress on, you don't even need to cut out that entire skirt piece that's flaring out or that ruffle because the dress is going to go right over it. I feel like I'm using a rusty pair of scissors. They don't want to move.
I wasn't totally into making this whole girl today because you guys have seen this a bazillion times and you've all done it. So once I get her cut out, I'm just going to show you a little bit more on the background of the tags. Adam line one, Adam line one. Cut right through that sleeve. Cut right through that dress. I've actually seen people that just don't have the heart to do that, and I don't know why. She can't feel it. It's not her skin. I'm doing a really bad job on her shoes. But that's okay. don't have to be perfect up in there because the dress is going to cover it. Glue her little dress down. her headband. Actually this little one had her crown on but we don't have time for the crown but I love that crown on her. It's too cute. I'm gonna take some punchinella which is a really small dot and I'm going to um, Nope, just as I suspected, we wouldn't be able to see that. I'm going to do some green dots. Um, because her dress is green. And I want to add just a little bit of green in here. So Some more in the corner. And then um, that was rock moss, one of my favorites. This is vintage pink, pink, vintage pink, one of my other favorites. And I'm just in some sporadic places doing these dots. It's very subtle but very colorful. The tag is still a little bit damp which actually is kind of nice because this pink is bleeding onto it slightly as I edge it. And I like that. And then I would pop dot her on, add embellishments, make it fun. With a background like this and her darling little clothes, you don't have to use a ton of embellishments. That's not something that I do a lot of. Before we go today, I want to kind of show you. I want to kind of... We'll paint her dress really quick and then we'll do a face. Don't let me forget to do a face. Um, 
Let's do let's do this color. Pink is always good. And I'll lift this up in a minute and I'll show you. I just colored that on. I'm going to take my damp brush and go over it. And then, let me see if I can get this. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have a tiny spot that I'm gonna work with. I'm gonna take that same pink and I did that, got it on my brush and I'm just gonna do some shading on the one side and I'm not staying in the lines uh, like I would if I was at home because that little scarf would be a totally different color and I'm kind of getting into it so see on the top how I just kind of shaded, shaded that. This is a, another example of just getting a little bit of color variation. And then I'm going to take some white paper and I'm going to go ahead and stamp a head on here now the faces they um they came in a clear stamp and a clear stamp has a little bit more flexibility than the clean stamps. So what I'm gonna do, you have to press it really, really light. Um, if you squish it down, and I'll kind of show you the difference. I got a really good stamping there. I wanted to practice before I put it on my face. The clear stamp allows you to line it up and I'll put all three but it does the lines are a little bit thicker and that's just the nature of doing a, a clear stamp but of course you know the reason we had to do a clear stamp was so you could see where you're placing it. So here are the different faces. And you can, of course, color them in. I think everybody looks a little better with cheeks. Do different colors here. And the eyes. I didn't really bring any eye colors with me, so we'll just do brown. that kind of gives you an idea. And 
that's about it. Do does anyone have any questions? Yes, a lighter ink would be a good idea. And even as we stand here, I want to see something. I'm going to see what happens with a distressed ink. No, we don't like the distressed ink at all. It bled. Okay, you guys, so that's about it. Um, I have some announcements somewhere around here. Um, let's see, the next show coming up, Jamie's going to be doing bloom tags on this Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. She will show you how to make smaller projects using her wonderful new bloom collection. That will be a lot of fun. Also, the Art Venture Atlanta is taking place October 18th and 19th in Atlanta, Georgia. Steph Miller, Sharon, I, you know, I don't even know if I've ever heard of her last name, Laconin and Ken Oliver will offer six fabulous classes using brand new summer releases from Prima. Go to the events page on Prima Marketing Flowers Facebook fan page to get more information on this and the other art ventures that are going to be taking place. Hey, you can see me reading this right off my phone. Isn't that classy? Anyway, thank you guys so much. Um, thank you for loving the Prima Dolls. Thank you for buying the Prima Dolls. I have so much fun making these and I'm so glad you're having fun with them. Keep sending lots of pictures through Facebook. I love looking at them and we'll see you next time. Thank you.